Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm going to be comparing the performance of a CO2 powered air rifle in hot weather and in cold weather. fact that CO2 and therefore CO2 powered air guns perform better in warmer conditions. So what I'm going to do in this video is explain why that is and then look at how much difference it actually makes. And to do that I filmed the video at two different times as you've already seen. So CO2 or carbon dioxide is a gas that can be used to power certain air guns uh, by way of small 12 gram capsules like this or larger 88 gram cylinders. Now, the CO2 inside these capsules, or powerlets as they're often known as, is stored in its liquid state, but when the capsule is pierced, the CO2 vaporises and expands to fill the air cylinder on the gun. But the rate of expansion and the pressure of the gas is dependent on temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the pressure, and the quicker the expansion of the gas. And obviously, the higher the pressure, the greater the power. So what I'm going to do now is see what difference temperature actually makes to the average air gunner with a CO2 powered rifle. The way I'm going to find that out is to basically gas up the gun and shoot it until it's empty and whilst I'm doing that I'm going to take note of how many shots I get from two 12 gram CO2 capsules um, and what kind of power I get over the course of those shots using my chronograph and I'm going to do that today which as you can see is about 25, nearly 26 degrees Celsius. So it's getting on towards 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'm going to do it again when it's much colder. Now I'm going to try and keep all the conditions apart from the temperature the same. So I'm going to be using the same gun, which would be my SMK QB78 Deluxe. The same tin of pellets, which are these Daystate Rangemaster 7.9 grain pellets. Uh, the same make of CO2 capsules. These ones are Umarex. And I'm also going to make sure I leave the same amount of time between shots as that can make a difference as the quicker you shoot the more the pressure drops. I've put the CO2 in the rifle. I'm now going to fire as many shots as I can over the chronograph using those two 12 gram CO2 capsules. Okay, so I've used up the two CO2 capsules. You can see they are empty. Now I've typed up my chronograph results, which you can see here. Now I managed to fire 84 shots before it ran completely dry. Uh, I did load the 85th, but there wasn't enough CO2 to actually fire it out of the gun. Now I've circled a few key shots in red here, which I will use to compare to when I shoot again in the cold. The first is shot two which was my most powerful shot at 664.4 feet per second. Um, the next one we shot 56, which was the first shot to um, drop below 600 feet per second. The next was shot 78, which is the point if I'd just been plinking, I'd have actually stopped shooting and dry fired the gun to get the rest, uh, rid of the rest of the CO2. And then the final one is shot 84, which was my final shot. So that's the end of my warm weather test, which was at a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius by the time I started shooting. I got 84 shots from these two 12 gram CO2 capsules with a maximum velocity of 664.4 feet per second. I now just need to wait a few months for it to get colder so I can finish my experiment. It's now been about five and a half months since I filmed the first part of the video. Uh, today, you can see it is 0 degrees Celsius, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 26 degrees colder than before. And I'm now going to repeat that same test. As I did before, I'm going to fire as many shots as I can over the chronograph using two new CO2 capsules, which I've already put into the rifle.
here I have my chronograph test sheet which I've updated with the results from today's test. Um, I thought the results were actually quite interesting but before I go on to those I just wanted to point out I have got a few lines here on my test sheet and those were from shots where I had an error on my chronograph um, probably because those shots weren't lined up quite properly although the ones towards the end it's more likely that they just weren't going quick enough to register on the chronograph. Uh, unfortunately though, my first four shots from today's cold weather test I couldn't get to register um, which after playing around with a bit I managed to solve by removing the diffusers from the top of the chronograph um, however I've still got enough usable data. Now as to be expected the hot weather shots had a higher velocity and therefore were more powerful and over the course of all the pellets the cold weather shots were around 100 feet per second slower than in the hot weather um, and that was including the quickest or the most powerful recorded shots which were 664.4 feet per second uh, at 26 degrees and 557.4 at 0 degrees. Now the hot weather shots took 56 pellets to get below 600 feet per second whereas in the cold today I didn't actually manage to get any above 600 feet per second. Um, but despite the lower power in the cold the shots seem slightly more consistent all the way through and by the time you get to kind of shot 70 or so the velocities are near enough the same with only around 10 feet per second in it. Um, so it seems that the CO2 pressure is spread more equally in the cold. And interestingly enough I did manage to get one more shot in the cold weather than I did in the hot and the point of where I would have stopped plinking was actually only one shot different here. Now if you're interested in seeing this result sheet in more detail I will upload it to the Air Armoury Facebook page which I'll put a link to in the description below. So for my tests it seems like you'll get roughly the same number of shots from a CO2 powered air gun regardless of the temperature but that in warmer conditions you're going to get more power but that power is going to drop off quicker towards the end of the CO2 than in colder conditions. Now with regard to actual impact on performance, um, in the optimum usable string of shots, the shots on the hotter day were more powerful by around 2 foot pounds. Now considering that CO2 powered air guns generally aren't kind of full powered legal limit guns, uh, if you're doing something like pest control you might want to think twice before using a CO2 powered air gun on a really cold day as that 2 foot pounds is going to make a big difference. If however you're just plinking, uh, whilst you're not going to get the optimum performance, your shooting probably shouldn't be affected too much. Now obviously I picked days with the biggest temperature difference for maximum effect for my tests um, and most of the time you're probably not going to be shooting in uh, kind of 26 degrees difference but they are genuine temperatures that you might encounter whilst out shooting in the UK on a summer's day and a winter's day. Before I finish the video, just a couple of quick warnings. Um, whilst I've established that increased temperature does improve performance, you shouldn't artificially heat the CO2 capsules, uh, for example by putting them on a radiator or leaving them in a car on a hot day, as that can be very dangerous, as these could potentially explode with excessive temperatures due to the pressure inside. And also, when I was doing my tests, I fired the gun until it was completely out of CO2 and wasn't even capable of pushing a pellet out of the barrel, uh, which meant I had to manually clear the barrel afterwards. Um, which I wouldn't recommend as you could potentially damage your gun or cause yourself injury and I wouldn't have done it had I not needed to for testing purposes. So I hope this video has been useful, uh, if so be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury and until next time keep your arms in the air.